Hello everyone and welcome to today's Green Business Fund technical webinar. In today's webinar we'll be focusing on an introduction to carbon footprinting for SMEs. My name is Sarah Laidler and I'll be your presenter today. I'm an analyst here at the Carbon Trust specialising in carbon footprinting and assurance. Okie doke, we'll get started then. So today's, today's agenda will be looking, going through what carbon footprinting is, why it's useful and how your organisation can measure a carbon footprint. But first as a bit of background, I'll introduce the Carbon Trust as a whole. So the Carbon Trust is a non-for-profit organisation whose mission it is to accelerate the move to a low carbon economy. Across the years, we've worked with a range of organisations to develop tools and strategies across the globe. Our experience is with SMEs, governments, and both organisations working in the public and private sector. This slide just indicates a few of the key clients we've worked with over the years of a range of sectors, such as financial services, healthcare, telecoms and media, and utilities. Now, hopefully most of you will know what climate change is and know that it's a problem for both governments and businesses that they are facing. But to set the scene, we can discuss some background information of the problem. This graph in particular shows the total anthropogenic greenhouse gas emissions from 2000 to 2010 were the highest in human history. Now, accompanying this since 1998, we've experienced some of the highest temperatures across the globe during a century period. To address this, we saw platforms such as the 2015 Paris Agreement, which allowed governments to pledge to keep global warming temperatures below that two degree limit. Although it's great that governments have taken a stand and pledged this agreement, it is also important that businesses can contribute and recognise that they have an important role to play in lowering their carbon footprint also. Since um, the 2015 Paris Agreement, a lot of businesses have developed science-based targets. I think that stands at about 355 companies. And building on this, have looked into carbon pricing in their business decisions. I think almost 80 companies have committed to this. And also looking at electrification of their company fleets. Before all this, however, for these specific companies, they have begun at the starting point of measuring and monitoring their carbon footprint. Now we're going to go into what carbon footprinting is and how it could be measured for your organisation. So in a nutshell, a carbon footprint is the total greenhouse gas emissions caused indirectly by an individual organisation, event or product and is expressed in a carbon dioxide equivalent. What we do is we take the main greenhouse gas emissions and use their unique global warming potential value to create a total CO2 equivalent value, which stands as a carbon footprint for that organization. The three main greenhouse gases, as most of you may well, may well know, is carbon dioxide, methane, and nitrous oxide. This is also joined by other gases such as refrigerants and, and extra gases through the industrial actions of businesses. Each set of emissions is split by the greenhouse gas protocol by scope. So scope one look, looks at direct emission, emissions from your organization's activities. This can include fuel combustion, combustion, manufacturing and process emissions. Scope two looks at indirect emissions from purchase electricity to your organization. And scope three is any other indirect emissions outside of your direct control. In the next slide, examples are, are displayed here. So for instance, for scope one, uh, we refer to fuel combustion and own transport. Process emissions and future emissions refer to refrigerants in your organisation. Scope two is electricity and purchase heat and steam. And scope three looks at business travel, um, grey fleet or any waste disposal. Considering areas such as own transport and business travel or your grey fleet is particularly important through ESOS and fleet reviews, as some of you may well know, having a good idea of the impact of your transport within your organisation can have benefits for both carbon footprinting and, and understanding your organisation's efficiencies for ESOS. 
from measuring your carbon footprint from these areas, it's useful to start to consider ways of reducing this impact. This could be things such as simple driver efficiency training or looking into electric vehicles to introduce to the fleet. Both scope one and two lie within your own operations control. As we can see from this slide, it covers the things that I've previously mentioned, such as company facilities, company vehicles, and purchase electricity, steam, and heating. Whereas scope three will extend further upstream and downstream your value chain. In scope three, we look at we look at most things and almost everything in the whole value chain, such as manufacturing, processing, transportation of your own suppliers and also distribution and waste management. Now, there are two main reasons to calculate your carbon footprint. First one may be obvious in terms of you begin to manage your greenhouse gas emissions and highlight areas for improvement. Not only will this highlight efficiency opportunities and hotspots, but it can also highlight areas where money could be saved in terms of energy and simple effect effective mitigations that could be put in place. The second reason is reporting your footprint accurately to a third party. If you're a smaller business, you're likely to be a supplier of a larger organization which may wish their suppliers to report carbon footprints for their own sustainability strategies. For instance, if a larger company is using yourselves as a supplier, they may wish for you to publish a carbon footprint for that larger supplier's CDP supply, supply chain program submission. This is becoming quite common as we're going through the years. There are a few types of footprints an organization can measure. Um, the first one is perhaps the most common is the organizational footprint. This is emissions from all the activities across the organization, including building energy use, industrial processes and company vehicles. The supply chain footprint, which I've previously mentioned, this looks at delivering all of a particular business's products and extraction of raw materials, right through to final reuse, such as recycling, disposal, and waste management. This can be tied in with the organizational footprint to look at the whole value chain. And also a product carbon footprint, which looks specifically at a specific product or service. As I mentioned, the, the most relevant to the majority of the listeners today will, and smaller businesses is the organizational footprint in which emissions from the organization's operations are considered. So this looks at building energy usage, company vehicles, and industrial processes. The next few slides will help flesh out how to measure and manage this particular type of carbon footprint. So the first two steps is to pick a method to be followed. The most common used is the greenhouse gas protocol. There is the option of ISO 14064. However, this also builds on the greenhouse gas protocol. It just goes a little bit further. The next step is to define an organizational and operational boundaries. Again, the most common is to look at operational control. However, this can be altered to look at the financial control if you own some franchises. <clears throat> um, the next step is to collect, collate the data. Um, when you're collating the data, it's important to make sure that you've got the best possible data you, could, you can manage. Primary data is always preferential. This involves um, invoices from gas, electricity suppliers, meter, re meter readings, fuel car data for transport. However, it's not always possible, especially if you're in a rented building, um, you might have some, some issues collecting that data. So secondary data is accepted and can be used, such as if you, you have business travel data based on sample data or travel survey that can also be used in your carbon footprint. The next step is to apply emission factors. This can be found on the, the Bayes website. These are updated every year. They're easily downloadable and can be used. And finally, the next step is to verify your results. It's all well and great managing your carbon footprint and measuring it yourself. However, that third party verification, such as something you receive from the Carbon Trust, helps add credibility to your, your calculation and gives you that confidence to publish it externally. As a case study and a success story, um, Jascott's wine merchants have published their carbon footprint for the past four years with the Carbon Trust. It's their ambition to use, to reduce the carbon footprint per bottle of wine sold. And this has been done by 90% across the years. 
when we're working with Jessica, we ask the key drivers of doing this. And this is, comes back to my previous point is that they are part of a larger supply chain. They want to give their customers confidence that they have measured their carbon footprint and that can be used as an environmental consideration and attracts clients who value corporate social responsibility. Additionally, um, for company values, they generally think it's a great thing to do. Having verification from a third party allows JustGots to not only publish their carbon footprint externally, but also allows them to offset their remaining emissions. <clears throat> so in addition to an organizational carbon footprint, it's also possible to measure the carbon footprint of a product or a specific service. This, however, goes in a little bit more detail to an organizational carbon footprint as it looks at the whole life cycle of a product, including emissions from suppliers, customers, and the distribution. Not only will it consider the making of the product, but will also look at the emissions across the entire life cycle. This graph just depicts that it'll look at the raw materials through product manufacturing, use phase, and final disposal. This, however, can be determined much like an organizational boundary an organization can look at a carbon footprint based on a cradle to gate, meaning, meaning that it's to the point of customer selling or business to business, or cradle to grave, which means it looks at the entire um, life cycle for all the way to disposal, which would be classed as a business to customer. Now, the steps for measuring a carbon footprint are very similar to that of an organization. However, they do require a more detailed approach to all elements of the product's life cycle. This begins with a product process map. Yeah. So this would involve a list of all materials, activities and processes that contribute to each stage of the chosen product's life cycle. And that would require a lot of groundwork to make sure everything is being considered within that product carbon footprint. The step two is to check the boundaries and determine priorities. So this would also look at what you would deem to be acceptable to exclude, such as consumer travel to retail outlets or a number of things, such as um, the, the way that it's then, if it's reused, that's sort of taken into account. Calculating a high level footprint first will help you focus data collection on the main greenhouse gas emission sources and help eliminate others, as mentioned before. Step three, as you'll remember previously, is to collate in the data. This will involve collection activity data, such as liters of fuel consumed per product unit, and select appropriate emission factors, such as kilograms of CO2 per liters of fuel. Again, primary data is always preferential, um, and especially when looking at a product carbon footprint also. The step four is to calculate the carbon footprint. So that would be similar to the organizationals when you multiply the emission factor by the amount of liters, or liters of fuel used to make sure that that is an accurate footprint. And then as finally verifying that carbon footprint. It is all, it, as said before, it's all well and good to calculate it yourself, but to make sure you can publish it externally with confidence, that third party verification is important. Now, onto communication. Communication of your carbon footprint can be a very powerful tool. Um, not only can it help engage employees, customers, and stakeholders into the sustainability of your organization, it can also just provide that level of confidence that you are differentiating yourself from other businesses out there and also help with larger supply chain sustainability also. I will use JustScots again as a great case study. JustScots have used this to demonstrate their efforts in reducing their carbon footprint over time per bottle and co communicating that they are offsetting their remaining emissions also. Measuring a carbon footprint and communicating this is an important step to improving the sustainability of your organization and helping you identify areas where more efficiency can be achieved. Now, there are further support available um, for those who want to look at calculating the carbon footprint. Um, this uh, webinar was supposed to give you an introduction to how this can be done and a self-help guide to achieving that accurate carbon footprint that is, can be communicated externally. If you wish for any more further support, 
We can look at energy efficiency training, which is provided by the Green Business Fund. This involves two hour workshops to help your organisation understand energy consumption and identify low cost measures. This can quite nicely feed into an organisational carbon footprint to make sure that you can look at quick wins once you've identified what that carbon footprint is and how to lower that over time. Technical webinars are also available, much like this one, to help better understand the opportunity, business case and capital support available. Additionally, there's also a virtual energy manager, which is quite similar to a webinar setup, but a little bit more detail. It's six structured and tailored modules, which will be delivered at regular interval intervals over the telephone. This can help you, again, look at energy sources in your organisation and how these can be mitigated and produce a lower carbon footprint over a course of time. Additionally, there are opportunity assessments, which are delivered by one of our engineers here at the Carbon Trust and are tailored to your organisation specifically. Implementation advice can also be de delivered by a Carbon Trust consultant, and that can be up to five days of work and be, again, tailored to your organisation. And finally, capital contribution, which the Carbon Trust can help, can help provide support on funding energy saving equipment. If you'd like any more information about this, um, please use the link at the bottom and that we can put you in contact with someone here at the Carbon Trust to help. And recently we now have a carbon footprint calculator online. So this is an excellent starting point for where you can start to calculate your organization's carbon footprint and aims to support SMEs to report their carbon footprint it includes some of the most common emission sources, such as electricity, gas, and fuel consumption and emissions. SMEs will be able to report their carbon footprint in line and widely recognized standards. The outputs follow the greenhouse gas protocol standards um, correctly. And it also gives step-by-step -step instructions and guidelines to help you with that as well. So it's not um, a blank Excel spreadsheet that you need to go away and work on. We do provide tools that can be available to your organisation to get started on carbon footprinting. Coming up in the next in the next couple of quarters, we do have a further applications that are available, which you can just see on the side there. The next thing that's also available is the Start to Act EU funded programme. This helps um, young SMEs and startups across across the area to help improve energy efficiency. It involves site visits from the Carbon Trust to help identify low, low carbon mitigations um, and phone support from the Carbon Trust expert. We do have an in-house expert on this, which is Lucy Hunt. Her email is just at the bottom there if you'd like any more information on the Start Act scheme. Additionally, we also have an SME network where you can engage with 2,000 existing members. There's a lot of discussion forums on there, which includes energy, carbon footprinting, policy legislation, finance funding, employee engagement, events, renewables, water and waste, and general helps and tips to help businesses with like-minded problems to come to conclusions and work towards carbon footprinting together. If you'd like any more information, we also have a range of publications and technical guides that can help you on your journey. Um, this involves things such as energy management and strategic themes and employee engagement, which might be an issue in your business. And these are all downloadable. Um, we also have a range of posters and stickers to help place around, around your um, organization to help with that there. On behalf of the Carbon Trust, thank you for joining us today and hope you enjoy the rest of the day. I hope this is a start of using Carbon Footprint as a useful tool within your organisation.